Hello again, I'm Lindsay with the KBRO and today I'm going to be sharing with you another one of our encounter reports from our website, KentuckyBigfoot.com. Now this particular report came to us from Taylorsville Lake in Spencer County. It occurred back in August of 2014 and there were five witnesses. Now it happened at 2 a.m. which is a creepy hour of the morning and um, it really is quite terrifying so stick with me i think you're going to enjoy it so let's get into the report it's written by matt and his wife and here's what they have to say we were at the primitive area site number 10 at taylorsville lake state park campground being some of the few night owls there last night there was only me my husband and one of our three children awake as well as two other campers about two sites over who had gotten to the campground around midnight. I was laying in the tent trying to sleep when I kept hearing strange, almost owl-like high-pitched noises at the bottom of the hill. After hearing my son and husband comment about hearing an owl, I decided that must be what it was. About 20 minutes later, my son had gone into the tent with his siblings and my husband had come into our tent. He was trying to settle in and I was too. When we heard the most horrible, loud, blood-curdling scream, howl, whoop, not sure how to describe it, and then a loud grunt. The scream, howl, whoop lasted about three to five seconds, and then immediately there was the loud grunt at the same pitch. It sounded like it was coming from the same area as the owl-like sounds from a short time earlier. My husband sat up about the same time as I did, and we both asked, both asked each other if we knew what it was. I told him, I have never heard anything like that. He said he had never heard anything like it either. We both could hear something moving in the woods, and by that time, after the scream, we were both very freaked out. So we immediately got the kids up and into the car. My husband kept shining his flashlight down the hill towards the noise, while one of our sons got out of the car and helped grab our valuables. My husband says that at that time he saw two eyes shining in the light and a shadow of a figure crouched down that then stood up. It appeared very large and then threw a rock at him which hit a tree next to him. My son confirmed he saw the rock hit the tree and fall to the ground. After that, we went home, which is about 45 minutes away, and the time was around 2.20 a.m. My husband and boys went back to collect our things after 10 a.m. that day. They looked around to see if there were any indication of what it could have been. They did not see any tracks of any kind. However, they did see trees bent over branches laid across the bent trees and a large area of flattened brush at the bottom of the hill from the site which we had been camping. After getting all of our things packed, they went to the ranger's office and told them what had happened. The ranger actually seemed to take it seriously and said they would check it out tonight. Then the ranger said he would not normally, he would normally brush this kind of thing off, but other campers who were also up late and had arrived around midnight, two sites down from us, complained about hearing strange sounds and something large in the woods and they too had left and demanded their money back. I've never believed in Bigfoot or anything like it. I've camped all over the US since I was a toddler. I've heard coyotes, wolves, bears, owls, birds, wildcats, hurt deer, hurt rabbits, and nothing sounded like what we heard. It will be a while, if ever, before I go camping again. I used to love it, but now I'm afraid because whatever this was, it was intelligent enough to watch until we were all in our tents and to throw a rock at my husband. That is what scared me the most. So the family were then asked to describe or give a description as to what they had actually seen. And here's what uh, they had to say. My husband described it as having eyes glowing in the flashlight and a shadow of a large figure crouched down. It shortly after stood up and threw a rock. At that time, my husband said it was very tall and large. 
So fortunately, this report came into us immediately. And because of that, Charlie was able to head out to the area and meet the family for a follow up investigation. And here's what he had to add to the encounter report. So the follow up was conducted later that same day. I called and made arrangements to meet the family at the campground later that afternoon. Matt, the husband and father, was visibly shaken up by the events of the morning. After evaluating the location, it was determined that the creature was much closer, approximately 50 yards away from Matt. It was definitely covered in dark hair and had greenish eyes. The height was also estimated higher, closer to nine feet. We searched for a rock and footprints, but the underbrush and leaf cover made it impossible. We did find a partial deer skeleton, old, at the exact spot where the creature stood. Also, further back in the woods on a game trail, we found a tree bent over at the tr over the trail, but the origin of this bend was not obvious. In their haste, the family left their tents and drove home at approximately 2 a.m. They noticed four deer sprinting across the road from the campground as they left. I explained to the family my hunch, that being because of the bleating deer, the whoops heard earlier and then the loud howl, the Bigfoot or Bigfoots were most likely hunting the deer and Matt had spoiled their hunt with his flashlight, prompting an aggressive rock throw. The Bigfoot was not aggressively attacking the family. Matt was very emotional at times during the follow-up interview and said something interesting at the end of our meeting. He said, I feel much better talking about this. It was the first time in 20 years of research where her, I had had an interview where the witness was this visibly shaken up after a sighting. Understandable because he felt like his family was in jeopardy. It was also refreshing to know that I actually helped him resolve his, his fear. Charlie Raymond, KBRO investigator. So there you have it. That concludes today's report from Taylorsville Lake. Now, if you were to visit our website, KentuckyBigfoot.com, you would find other encounter reports from that same area. Um, so definitely worth a little time exploring there. Um, super interesting report. I do hope this family did find the courage to go back into the woods because I think that's where we all find a little peace. Um, but there we have it. So I hope you enjoyed today's report. I enjoyed reading it to you and hopefully I'll get to doing another one for you relatively soon. Um, in the meantime, visit our website, KentuckyBigfoot.com. Find us on Facebook. We're also on TikTok. Um, we're all over the map, all, all the things. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.